Last week, initially, a lot of people were excited about some things that Disney had announced at their D23 Expo, especially about things coming to Disneyland and Disney World. But then after the Expo, Disney also revealed where some of the items that they had announced are going to go, and one of them being that the Cars Land attraction that they had announced was going to basically replace the Rivers of America and Tom Sawyer Island, which has left many people, including myself, not very happy to hear about this. And if you go online, you'll hear a lot of people talking about this. And even some of the people that I've heard from have said Disney is a little taken aback by the reaction to this, because I don't think they thought this was going to elicit the backlash and reaction that it has. But we even now have an article from the Orlando Sentinel that is going to talk about this and some of the reactions to this and uh, figured it was a good one to read and check out and see what it has to say here. So we're going to do that. So hi, I'm Jared with Capture the Magic. And this article headline here is Disney World expansion plan excites some fans and rattles others. Said it's trite but true. It's been a roller coaster week for some Disney World fans. They learned of promising expansion plans, but later found that the addition of Magic Kingdom attractions translates into the subtraction of sentimental favorites. Among the stash of worldwide Disney announcements made on Saturday was the news that two Cars rides were being added to Magic Kingdom's Frontierland. On Monday, Disney confirmed that the new rides will be built on Tom Sawyer Island, replacing the long-standing fort and caves, and the area will also lose the Liberty Bell boat, which currently rests on the rivers of America that surround the island. And those attractions have been operated in Magic Kingdom since the early 1970s. Uh, it says, quote, so people are completely forgetting all the good news, and now they're just mad, said Michelle Atwood, owner of Main Street Mouse website. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, that's the thing about this, too, is... It's Disney had announced expansions and expansions are not we're going to replace one land with another. Now, what's replacing it, I think, is the other issue. I think if they were going to put in here radiator springs like they have out at Disneyland, which is one of the most popular lands that Disneyland has and people love it. They talk about all the time. I think it might be a little bit of a different reaction because people know that and it has that actually has a little bit more of a nostalgic vibe. But given the fact that they announced this as a Cars land, but it's themed after everything, and then they're going to, it's like dirt racing, and they're going to try and tie it into Frontierland. I think that's the thing about this because it's just shoehorned in here where it just does not belong. And I think that's really where a lot of the people's reaction, including myself, have an issue with it on top of the fact Frontierland has a direct connection to Walt himself. There are no rides on Tom Sawyer's Island now. It's a free-lined rustic playground area. Its themed is its theme is based on Mark Twain characters and visitors only access via log rafts. Liberty Bell, a triple decker paddle boat, loops around the island for views of Frontierland attractions and the nearby haunted mansion. So at least for me, and I think a lot of people, my issue isn't that Tom Sawyer Island is being replaced. I think that one is just an area. It is underutilized. It's tough to get to. Uh, in you know, Tom Sawyer Island is not something that's a relevant thing today. The main issue comes into getting rid of Rivers of America. That's the part where, mo- every, at least from what I've seen, most people have an issue with. That's my issue, is you're getting part of not only a nostalgic ambiance filled area that really adds a, a feel and a and a mood to the entire area and its connection to Walt and those things are both being removed. I think if it was just Tom Sawyer Island and they were altering the Rivers of America, they were going to keep it but it was going to be changed a little bit. I don't think people have as much of an issue with it, but it's just the fact that all of it's going out and I again, the ambiance and feel of that entire area is going to completely and drastically change. I think far beyond what a lot of people assume. People were saying things like they'll miss hearing the the whistle of the ferry boat when you're standing in line for Haunted Mansion and the aesthetic of the area, Atwood said. That's part of it, exactly. It's an ambiance area. It's an ambiance thing. Again, it's been there since the park opened. Online, some Disney fans limited the loss of playground space on the merchandise-free island and said they'd miss that, quote, romantic piece of ambiance. Others objected to cramming cars into the frontier setting. Both. Another complaint was that the move eliminates a place where kids can run free, but the island usually isn't densely populated, and many fans posted that they had not ventured over there in several years. Again, I don't think Tom Sawyer Island is the issue here. It's it's everything that it's all encompassing here. For the most part, Disney has not revealed timelines for its expansion projects, including the Cars attractions. Disney Experiences Chairman Josh Giamaro indicated folks will be able to see the island in its current form the rest of this year. I, the timeline for construction is something that I definitely have some questions about because if you've paid attention to Disney's construction timelines, 
they're typically very long. So I, I'm curious about this entire area of how long it'll be under construction. John Sakiri, who owns BigFatPanda.com, it covers Disney, he said, last went to Tom Sawyer Island a year ago, and he was underwhelmed. Quote, I did feel like, wow, this is really out of place. It ought to be more special. I felt if it was in the Magic Kingdom, and it just wasn't. Uh, the Tom Sawyer area isn't the nostalgic draw of decades ago, said Simon v Venice, a travel writer and guidebook author. Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer was published in 1876 and has been made into multiple movies and TV productions since 1917. It just doesn't appeal to the majority, and the market has moved on, he said. People want what Disney is selling. You know, by and large, they want cars. And I'm not going to, I don't think, cars is not a relevant IP. Let's be real about this. Uh, that's that's an older one. I'm not saying, not, our kids haven't enjoyed cars on some level, but I don't think anybody's clamoring for cars personally speaking uh they want monsters inc they certainly want the villains i think people wanted these things 10 years ago that's one thing about the announcement that disney made all these ideas had been except for the well the cars and how they did it wasn't exactly but like bringing over radiator springs and all that like the monsters inc land the villains land all this stuff had been talked about for better part of a decade so i think on some level people did want these things more than they do right now but that's the other thing about this. Now, I'm, I don't think people are clamoring for cars, especially in Frontierland. I just don't think that's the case. I don't think anybody would have a problem with cars. And, and in fact, I don't have an issue with cars if you're adding it on and it just goes behind like they initially had said, like Big Thunder Mountain. Don't have a problem with that. It's just the fact that it's going to be replacing an iconic like opening day element of the park. And it's going to completely change that park. It's, it's going to completely change Haunted Mansion vibe as well. So that's the issue you're running into with this. And I just don't think personally Disney is giving much thought to ambiance and feel and flow of a park. I think they're just looking at capacity, you know, stuff that will bring people in and we can increase the money. That's all they're looking at on this. They're not looking at this from an ambiance level. And let's be real as well. I think a lot of this goes into, I don't think they like Frontierland. I don't think modern day Disney uh, likes having it. I don't think they want much to do with it. And I think also probably Liberty Square is probably on the chopping block as well. I've actually heard as much. Drew Smith over here on Twitter X goes by Drew Disney Dude says, my understanding is that in addition to Frontierland and Tom Sawyer Island, Disney recently documented Liberty Square as well. Liberty Square was not included in the announcement of the removal of Tom Sawyer Island and the Rivers of America, yet it could be part of the transformation of Magic Kingdom Park. While we don't know why this documentation has was done yet it could be a sign that changes are on the way to liberty square in addition to the cars themed attractions in Frontierland. i think that is definitely something they're looking at i think the reason they didn't make the announcement was because they know if they just basically say that all this is going away at one time you're dealing with a lot of people being upset versus in their minds they can just piecemeal it out and then eventually they may keep the name Frontierland, but it would be a name only. I mean, we, we're already basically Pecos Bills has already been talking about that's going away, it becoming a Tiana's thing. Uh, then you had the shooting arcade that was taken away. That's now going to be a DVC lounge. Obviously, Tiana, our Splash Mountain was changed to Tiana's. Now you're going to have Rivers of America gone for cars. Like it's not Frontierland. Like it's it's just becoming Frontierland in name only. And then if they get rid of Liberty Square as well, they're probably just looking at you know, doing more IPs over there or creating space, which they could do, create space for some haunted mansion lounge that they would like to do, stuff like that. So I guess it depends on how you're going to look at it. I guess the best case scenario is Disney's just looking at putting more IPs and they look at it as underutilized space in the park. And this is would bring more people in. That's one way you could look at it. The other way you can look at it is modern day Disney does not like the idea of Frontierland or Liberty Square and they want to get rid of it. And I think, honestly, that's where a lot of this stems from because you could keep this area and add on. You could do that. In fact, this was supposed to be expansions, but they're choosing to get rid of these, not because they have to, but because they want to. And I think that's an important distinction. I think this is a decision that is going to be one of the biggest mistakes they're making. They've made in the parks. I think they'll come to ultimately regret this. And it's a very reactionary decision. And I'm not going to make the argument that this is the most visited part of the park. But I also think it's not a coincidence that they want to get rid of some of these elements that uh, you know their internal team of people have looked at as quote problematic for a while now but i digress okay let's get back we'll finish up this article here so 
the villain's concept was a crowd pleaser at the experience of showcase portion of the D23 event, earning an enthusiastic response from the attendees. It was the capper of the evening presented in, quote, in one more thing style by Diamaro. I said, quote, we don't even know anything about what's in the land, but the thought of it and the idea of it is cool, said John Sakari. That's the th- that's the issue I have with it. Now, I had been saying for a long time, the villain's land is the biggest potential home run that they have. And if you're lo- talking about something that could be an answer to Epic Universe, that would be something that actually I think would move the needle. But the problem with this is they didn't give any details. And if you've been following Disney long enough, the concept art that they reveal never ends up being what they build. I mean, basically ever. I don't know the last time that it, the concept art they revealed was remotely accurate. And it seemed like it was just a very much early rough draft. I wouldn't spend too much time looking into the concept art about finding Easter eggs and hidden things here and there because it'll ultimately change and it'll probably change a lot. So while I think the idea of a villain's land is something that can work, there needs to be more details about what it's going to entail. Now, they did say there'd be two attractions, there'd be food and shopping, but like that's a pretty basic thing exactly what's it going to encompass again when's it going to be built i would argue you're not going to see villains land probably closer to 2030 is my guess uh so if this is your answer essentially or one of your main answers to epic universe i mean you're basically giving universal a five-year run of whatever impact it's going to have in the market before you would have you know your big answer ready disney has said it will spend 60 billion dollars worldwide on theme parks and other experiences over the next decade and industry watchers have speculated that the company's moves in central florida come partly because universal orlando is to open epic universe its third theme park in 2025 i don't think it's a um partly because i think they're doing all this specifically because of epic universe because if it wasn't for that they're not going to be doing these things they're doing now on this massive scale there's no way so quote disney wouldn't have announced this if there wasn't something big going on just down the street it also happens to include monsters right venice said so you can be a little skeptical from that point of view that disney is being reactive rather than proactive they're always reactive disney is not a proactive company and this is part of the problem i think they're having a big risk in terms of you know they've already talked about theme park demand is softening going into 2025 epic universe opens in 2025 if Epic Universe is the major giant impact to the market that a lot of people, including myself, predict and, and assume that it will be, they're playing a pretty dangerous game in terms of you know who you know market percentages, who controls what. Because if Epic Universe has the impact that let's say when Hogsmeade first opened that that was a thirty five percent increase in their attendance, if they have that or more and it draws away from Disney, Disney has nothing to counter it essentially outside of parades and shows like they announce for. I'm gonna. I'm going to just say three to five years. I'd be shocked if we see anything on the three-year mark, given how Disney, you know, currently constructs things. And they are just reactive. They've been reacting to Universal ever since Hogsmeade, the Wizarding World, showed up. And I think if you look at the timeline, it's very obvious that's what's happening. Uh, Michelle, I would go on to say that makes sense. Some people say Disney doesn't care what Universal is doing. I don't think that's true. Uh, well, agreed. In a competitive market, being the parks are 20 minutes from each other, I think they do have to be mindful of what's going on out there. Well, Bob Iger said they've known about it for 10 years. So, you know, of course. One of Epic's lands is named Dark Universe, and it features a descendant of Dr. Frankenstein with classical universal monsters. Disney fans have hoped for a villain's concept for years, although naysayers predicted it was too spooky for Disney parks. Quote, I feel like it's going to be like tongue-in-cheek darkness. I think it'll satisfy the fans and not scare the kids, Cherry said. But who knows? They keep using the word fearless through this new vision in what a land can be. I think to make any assumptions of what they're going to do is is also like, I'm not going to give them the benefit of doubt on this. I, I, there's no details. And I think one of the reasons Disney, so again, Dis, Villains Land had been an idea for a long time. And one thing that we'd always heard is they didn't do it because they weren't sure how to really do it where it was like family friendly and for kids like to thread that needle. That'll be interesting how they take the approach there, because if it's too dark and too scary, you're, you're, you're going to push away families. And then if it's too kitty and it's not dark enough, the Disney adults are going to get mad. So I think they're left in a pretty interesting spot on how they do this. I'm not saying they can't pull it off, but I'm saying it's not as simple as people want to see villains. But I don't think it's as simple as that. I think there's you've got to do it in a very you got to thread that needle just right to really pull it off. And ultimately, it's going to be compared directly to Dark Universe over at Epic Universe. And it's going to be interesting how those two play out because they're very similar lands in, in these parks going forward. 
Uh, the first of the new attractions to be seen at Disney World may be Disney Starlight, a parade at Magic Kingdom set to start in the summer of 2025. It will be the first regularly scheduled nighttime parade at the theme park since 2016. So the expansion is a big around the world task, Venice said. It's on a scale that's quite mind boggling, he said. When you really look at what they're proposing to do, it's going to have a long term payoffs and it's going to have short term pain. Fans want everything, he said, looking for Disney to keep both sentimental attractions and new ones to its parks. People complain, complain, and complain, and complain, but yet they still go there, Atwood said. They still spend the money. And I think relying on that fact and always ignoring what your fan base wants eventually will co- will catch up to you. It just will. And I, don't, I think the path Disney's been going down with increased competition, I think is going to be one they're going to regret. Now, are people still going to go to Disney? Yes. And I'm not even saying that Universal is ever going to overtake Disney in terms of market share. I, they may not ever do that, at least in the short term. Disney World, again, is the size of Manhattan. But the way in which they're operating now of making these these wild changes, especially to Magic Kingdom, which is the number one theme park in the entire world. So then you have to ask yourself, if for the people claiming that they're not responding to Epic Universe, then why are they making these drastic changes to the number one theme park in the entire world. And they're making distinctive choices about getting rid of a lot of the legacy stuff with Walt. And, you know, I think you're just going to change a lot of the Magic Kingdom that I don't think it's a necessary thing to change. Again, it's the number one theme park in the world. I don't think you should be going in and just destroying and getting rid of elements of your park that have been around since it's opened. I think adding on it would be, I don't think anybody would, I mean, I'm sure some people would complain. It's the internet, but I don't think you would have the backlash that you're going to have if these things were added and expanded and this area stayed. And I understand theme parks change and, and you're always adding things. I just think it's unfortunate when you're looking at like, you're talking about a theme park and not an amusement park and theme parks are supposed to have ambiance and they set a tone and make you feel a certain way, have an emotional pull. I think rivers of America, I think anybody in that area benefits from it being there the ambiance for when you're on haunted mansion when you're walking down Frontierland, i you know big thunder i think by doing all this it's just going to drastically change the ambiance and feel of that entire area of the park but it seems disney is going ahead with this they have filed the permits to do all this i suppose maybe on some level the rivers of america can stay in some way i suppose they can make those changes i'm not going to hold my breath on that but it's possible that they could, but uh, it seems like, at least as of right now with what's happening, we don't know when construction is going to start or when this whole area will be done, but that's going to be it for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel as we do lots of coverage here of Disney World, Epic Universe, Universal Studios, and Pop Culture News. Let us know in the comments, what do you think about all this? And do you think this land is going to improve Magic Kingdom or do you think it's going to make the Magic Kingdom less desirable? And until next time, we will see you in the parks.